So the crowd of competition is most definitely going to thin thanks to this NAR settlement if it gets enacted and put to practice. Now, job analysts predict there's going to be a big exodus out of the industry if indeed this happens, and chances are it will. So here's how you can become the solution Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about three ways to use the recent NAR settlement to gain the unfair advantage in your market. And perhaps more importantly and more specifically, how to use it to attract more quality, top-producing realtor partners. You see, this is the nature of the game, friends, turning adversity into opportunity. So we're going to talk about how to do that today, how to capitalize on this major industry shakedown with this NAR settlement. $418 million NAR settlement obviously is still a proposal at this stage. It hasn't been fully approved or uh, put into practice yet, but as far as we can tell, This is going to be a major shakedown in the industry when it comes to how commissions are paid and specifically a big impact on buyer's agents. We're going to get more into the details on it in a moment, but we're going to talk today about how to become the solution to your realtor's fear because there's a lot of realtors freaking out right now and how to help your realtors turn this adversity into opportunity so they can take market share while their competition's dropping like flies. Because when this takes effect, their competitors will definitely either step up or step out. There will not be any in-between. Part-timers, the bottom feeders, the struggle bunnies, they will be back to selling solar, driving Uber, and back to nine to five prison. So this is a huge opportunity when it comes to thinning the competition and taking market share. Now, after coaching mortgage pros to success for almost two decades, I can tell you I've seen the good, bad, and the ugly. We saw that Dodd-Frank hit the scene in the mortgage industry in 2010. So we already know what it's like. For those of you who've been in the business for a while and you've been in business since 2010, you know what it's like to go through an industry shakedown where it feels like the rug's getting pulled off from underneath you and you have to reinvent yourself and you have to adjust to some major shifts in how you're getting paid and the paperwork and it's getting harder, not easier to do business, working longer and harder for less. Like You know the pain of what that feels like to make that adjustment. So you can connect intimately with the pain and the fear and the concern that realtors are feeling right now. And so I can tell you with absolute certainty that in times of fear, that's when the guiding light of leadership is needed more than ever before. That's where you come in for your realtors. You see, the darker the times of fear, the more they need the light of your leadership. So with that in mind, here are three things you need to know about this NAR settlement. Number one, it will be, if indeed it is enacted, the end of the mandatory buyer agency commission fees. Now, based on the proposed settlement, the seller's agent will no longer disclose the cooperating commission amount paid to buyer's agents on the MLS. This means when this change is enacted, that the commission for the buyer's agent will become negotiable. So their commissions are going to be on the chopping block It's no longer going to be ironclad and a done deal just by virtue of having a listing agent sharing the two and a half or three percent on the commission that the seller is paying. So the seller now has the option to pay 0.0 cooperating commission, which means the buyer client could be responsible for compensating their buyer agent directly with the commission amount being 100% negotiable. So we're looking at going from 2.5% buyer agent commission to maybe as low as 1%. That's a deep cut in commission, as I'm sure you'd agree. Now, of course, some buyers will opt to self-represent, which means they're not paying any buyer commission. They're doing it themselves. That has its own landmines and issues that comes with someone self-representing and being clueless and just being cheap and not being properly represented and properly guided. 
the first time home buyers will certainly be stepping on some significant landmines and buyers remorse and regret if they opt for that choice. But that's not the point of this conversation right now. That's another conversation. So now more than ever, the money is in the listings, friends. If you think about in a seller's market, that's a given, right? You're going to have probably 10 times more work as a realtor to drive around town and show 20 different homes, make five to 10 different offers to maybe make get one deal under agreement versus getting a listing and selling it within a week or two, right? Very little work. It's easy money, fast money. Now with this new enactment of how they're going to be changing the commission paid to the buyer's agent, it's even more of a listing agent game. That's where the money is. Even in a buyer's market, which we're not in, and who knows when we're going to be in a buyer's market anytime soon, it's still going to be, chances are, easier money, more money on the listing side, especially with these changes in compensation. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. The second thing is these changes may reduce housing prices. Maybe. That is the key word, right? Maybe. Many industry experts believe that commission cuts could accelerate the recovery of the housing market and make home prices more affordable. That's a big if. However, since interest rates remain relatively high in most cities, face relatively low inventory, it's still uncertain, even doubtful, whether these changes will lead to a decrease in house prices. We're not seeing any reduction in house prices across the country, both in Canada and the US. So the chance of that is pretty slim. I think it's pretty lavish to think that this, just because of the way they're disclosing that information uh, on the MLS and they're making buyer agent commission negotiable, that it's going to make a significant, noticeable, immediate reduction in house prices. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Chances are it will be due to the fact that there's a whole lot more inventory and rates are a whole lot lower such that there isn't the situation we have now, which is no one wants to move because they have a low rate. They don't want to have to pay more for less house. So there's very little inventory. So we still have very high house prices. At least that's the situation in the States. And certainly in Canada, very low inventory continues to drive house prices up. So we'll see what happens with that. Now, the third thing that I'll want to talk about with regards to this NAR settlement is less commission to the buyer's agent. Chances are will lead to fewer buyer agents. If they're getting paid less and they're going to have to compete more aggressively, chances are the strong will survive and perhaps even thrive and the rest will go back to nine to five prison. So while reduced buyer agent commissions might help spark new activity in the market, a lower commission model may be the final tipping point for many of these buyer's agents that are part-timers, struggle bunnies, low volume. They're not true career agents. They're just part-timers. They're dabblers. Those guys are out of business. So the crowd of competition is most definitely going to thin thanks to this NAR settlement, if indeed it gets enacted and put to practice. Now, job analysts predict there's going to be a big exodus out of the industry if indeed this happens, and chances are it will. So here's how you can become the solution with three ways to use the NAR settlement to your advantage and attract more realtor partners who see you as their go-to as their lifeline and as their strategic partner to help them win in unwinning times. First thing you wanna do with your strategic rollout of how this is going to go with your ability to turn this adversity into opportunity is start forging partnerships with listing agents. Historically, it's never ceased to amaze me how few loan officers, mortgage brokers, go after listing agents. They're like, ah, nah, they only do listings. I need buyer's agents. They have the buyers. What they neglect to understand is buyers, borrowers are looking for one thing, houses. Who has the houses? The listing agents. They have the inventory that is the ultimate bait to attract buyers. So why would you neglect listing agents? Now, the other thing you want to be thinking about is 
a lot of buyer's agents are going to be leaving the business. So do you want to be hitching your wagon to people who are going back to nine to five prison? Or do you want to hitch your wagon with people who are taking market share and are true career agents and are taking even more of the competition by storm because they're a bona fide, certified, qualified top producer owning the lion's share of the market and they have a bunch of properties. They have a bunch of listings. Which one do you think is going to have the highest potential? Potential, easy for me to say, to send you more business more often. You and I both know it's going to be the listing agents. Plus, the seller, clients of that listing agent, chances are, unless they're buying cash, they're going to need a mortgage on that next property. So there's a lot of opportunities there, especially considering those properties, if they're doing open houses, have buyers coming in there who need buyer's agent if indeed they're still looking to have uh, someone represent them. But for you, with your situation as a mortgage professional, you're going to be in a position to be able to get them pre-approved. And more importantly, give them a strategy to get under contract. Give them a winning strategy to get them under contract. That's the name of the game. Don't just give pre-approvals. Give your borrowers a winning strategy to get under contract. If you will roll out a strategic plan to help them do that, not only will you attract more buyers, but you're going to attract more buyer's agents and seller's agents because at the end of the day, no one gets paid until someone gets under contract and that deal closes. So think about that once again. Listing agents are a huge opportunity for you. Like we talked about, They have the ultimate bait for tracking buyers, listings. So show them how to get more listings, generate more buyer leads at their open houses, and from the various marketing activities they're doing, pre-approve those buyer leads, give them a winning strategy to get under contract, and help your listing agents sell their homes faster and for top dollar. Okay, So that's strategy one on how you can be the solution and turn this NAR settlement shake down into a strategic advantage for you and your partners. Now, the second strategy to become the solution to your realtors and have them see you as their go-to become irreplaceable and indispensable to your partners is to help your buyer agents get more listings. Get more listings. If they haven't noticed by now, that's where the money is. And so if you can help them get more listings with a variety of different marketing strategies, tools, and tactics, you're going to put them in a winning position. The more you help them win, the more you win. Now, if you want to check out a really powerful system that can help them have the strategic advantage to win more listings, check out this amazing technology called MoveTube. You can learn more about it with a free uh, online training at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash move tube replay. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash move tube replay. Check it out. I think you'll find it fascinating and will definitely add a razor sharp arrow to your quiver to help your listing agents win more listings and become the no brainer of the year for that home seller to hire them as the marketing expert of choice. And that is the name of the game once again, help them get more listings. Now, the third strategy to become a strategic advantage to your partners and attract more partners to you like moths to a porch light on a dark summer's night is teach your buyer's agents how to sell their value to buyers. Teach them how to sell their value before they didn't have to sell their value because it was paid by the home seller. As soon as that goes away, they're going to have to sell their value. In other words, why should I work with you, buyer's agent? Why shouldn't I work with someone else or self-represent? What's benefit to me since I'm tuned into the only station any human being will ever be tuned into called WIIFM? What's in it for me? What's in it for me, Mr. Buyer's Agent or Mrs. Buyer's Agent? when it comes to why I should choose you over all my other options, including self-representing. Now, if the buyer's agent doesn't have a strategic and compelling unique value proposition, they're going to be a dead duck as soon as this NAR settlement takes effect. So here's a little hint. These buyer clients, they don't need help 
searching on the MLS. They can do that on their own. That's easy, breezy, lemon squeezy, especially with these younger, techni technologically adept buyers. They already know how to do that. They don't need a buyer's agent to look for homes on the MLS. I've bought multiple properties in the last two properties. My wife and I didn't even need the buyer's agent to find the property. We found it on our own. And then we ended up paying like eight grand to the buyer's agent for doing Jack the Lee squat, but just giving us some paperwork to sign. Is that really worth eight grand? Probably not. So understandably, this shakedown is going to make the whole transaction process of buying a home, selling a home, may not affordable, certainly on the seller side or on the buyer side, rather, more affordable. But even if I'm paying 1%, 2%, I want to know that there's a benefit to that other than just giving me some paperwork. I can download, download that stuff off the internet. For a savvy buyer, that ain't no thing like a chicken wing. Like I don't really need to pay five, seven, eight grand for some paperwork. So this is where you come in. We need to give your buyer's agents a compelling hook. Why should the buyer hire them? What's in it for them? And so that's another big reason why Smart Ambitious Growth Minded Mortgage Pros hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com is to have a full quiver of unique value you can bring to your buyers. But one of the most compelling ways to bring unique value to your buyer agent partners is to show your buyer agent partners how you're going to help their borrowers get under contract, tip the scales of fortune in their favor to get under contract. It's not just about getting a pre-approval. That's important. It's not just about them knowing how much they can afford in a home. That's important. But it's about tipping the scales of fortune in their favor by calling the listing agent when the offer is made to tout the merits of your buyer and the solidity, the rock solid solidity of their offer. So they win the deal, even if there's multiple offer scenario in, in, in place where they're getting five offers, 10 offers, multiple offers. Why should the listing agent and the home seller choose your buyer and their offer? That's really what you're speaking to when you reach out to them and you are now their advocate. Do you think your buyer agents would appreciate that? Absolutely. Now the buyer agent can use that as a compelling, unique value proposition, right? Now they can say, hey, you can go and self-represent all day long if you want, but in the seller's market, good luck getting under contract. The reason why clients work with me, because they don't want to just make offers. They want to get under contract. So me and my team, my dream team, are going to work in your favor. We're going to go to battle for you and work in your favor to help you get under contract. Here's how we do it. Boom, 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 boom. And that's going to help them get more buyer clients because it's something strategically unique and advantageous they can't get just by self-representing. And they certainly can't get by working with Joe Schmo, average buyer agent, who's not doing those sorts of things. So I hope you find this helpful. I hope you find that this is a great opportunity while your buyer agents are in freak out mode and even listing agents. There's a lot of uncertainty in the market. I hope you'll find that this uh, episode today has put rocket fuel in your rocket to use this to your advantage, use it to your partner's advantage, and leave your competition in the dust and help your partners do likewise. So that's all we got for today. My name is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Remember, winning doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. So let's get out there. Let's get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's how champions roll. Plan your work, work your plan. Let's go. Thanks for hanging with us. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.